You may be also interested in how I came to know this community. Again, I emphasize that I consider it a providential moment for me. As I told you before, I teach at the University of St. Thomas Graduate School of Theology. And one day I received a phone call from uh, the dean and she said, there is a Turkish Muslim imam here uh, who would like to take your courses. And even though you have already finished one week of the courses, would you be willing to accept him into your courses as a student? And I said, well, certainly. Please send him over. I would be most happy to welcome him. And from that moment on, uh, I became more and more introduced to the uh, Fethra Gulen community and the Institute for Interfaith Dialogue. Uh, one day, uh, we took uh, our class uh, to a Catholic church where they, would have, where, they, where they were holding their annual mission. And that means that a, um, uh, a priest or a, a lay person is invited to come in and give uh, talks and conferences on some aspect of uh, Christian life. And uh, people gather, they reflect on it, they pray together to deepen their own sense of what it means to be a Catholic and live in the world uh, according uh, as a disciple of Jesus. And um, so we all went. I took the whole class to the church. And when we were in the church, I was sitting in the first pew uh, with uh, our Muslim student, Imam. And as we sat there, the priest was talking to us about the parable of the prodigal son. And his main point of focus uh, in speaking about that parable was to emphasize that Christians must practice fe uh, table fellowship. Uh, namely, that we have to have a table which is open and which we invite others to sit with us and share our life and share the love that we are trying to live and also the service that we are giving to the world. And as he was speaking, I saw out of the corner of my eye uh, the, uh, the imam, whose name was Ahmed, and uh, his, he kept nodding his head in affirmation. Everything that the priest would say, he would nod his head in affirmation. And so after uh, the uh, conference was over, we went into one section of the parish and we continued our class because it was a three-hour class. And when we finished the class, uh, he simply said to me, Father, may I say something to the class? And I said, well, certainly, please do. And he said, well, I would like to f invite all of the class, and there were 30 people in the class, to come to the Rumi restaurant for table fellowship. Well, you can only imagine how this touched the hearts of all the students who were there and myself. Uh, we were so overwhelmed uh, with this uh, gesture uh, of welcome and uh, also fraternity uh, that we did go and we had a wonderful time. Uh, many of the members of the Muslim community were there to be our hosts. And um, after which um, my class, some of my class uh, said to me, well, Father, we have to reciprocate we have to offer a meal to them as well. So we did. At the end of the course, all the students brought some food and naturally we were uh, put in a little bit of a, uh, a situation in which we had to be creative because we had to respect the dietary laws of the Muslim community. But nonetheless, I think we found something that everybody could share. And when we came there, we told uh, Ahmed that he could uh, invite as many uh, people from the Muslim community as he wanted. So we had a wonderful group. About 20 people came, we sat there, uh, we enjoyed the table fellowship, uh, and then afterwards uh, we sang songs to each other and prayers to each other. Prayers for peace. Uh, prayers uh, in which we call on the names and the attributes of Allah. And at that time was the first time I, I met the official members of the Institute for Interfaith Dialogue and from that point on, everything developed and a whole new world has been opened up to me and to my students. Unfortunately, uh, Ahmed went back to Turkey uh, for the funeral of his father. And uh, because of 9-11, there were certain things which didn't permit him to come back into the country because there was something, some technicality with the visa. 
and we have been deprived of his presence here. He's now in England, and uh, just yesterday I received an email from him, and I was tremendously touched again uh, by the affection that he has. And he begins the email by saying, My dear father, this is your son Ahmed writing to you to tell you that I am trying to live out some of the principles that you talked about in your Christian spirituality class. I am trying to act, live out active receptivity, which, will, which means that I have to open my heart to God actively to let God work in my life and in the circumstances of my life every day. Well, you can imagine uh, what this has done for me both as a teacher and as a friend. He, the man just has a way of getting into your heart. And I have to tell you that that has been my experience with every member in the Institute for Interfaith Dialogue. They have a, no, they have a way of knowing how to come right into your heart and touch your deep, deeper sensitivities and open up for you the possibility of relationship. When we talk about dialogue, that's precisely what we're talking about. Dialogue is another word for relationship. It is not about some truths. It is not about theological concepts. It is first and foremost the quality of the relationships that we have with each other. So I, um, uh, I am truly grateful for the presence of this young man who came to me, found himself on the doorstep of my class. Uh, we invited him in and then he invited us into his life and, in, and into his heart as well.